who handles legislative issues for East Montgomery County. He leads up the group for my two picks, or Ed Reinhardt's two picks. Through. He asked me who I would like. And those guys, I mean, it wasn't just like we throw a dart on a map and so said, oh, that looks like a good one, we'll do it. You it was like a pain. Star College. Yeah, well, it was a painstaking process. But to and, be, to be you know, fair, I'm not kind of cut you off, yeah. but Jim uh, didn't come to, to be drug in. I was kind of joking when I said that. And get more questions. So, don't give me a speech. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 you, you voted for that bond, three hundred fifty million. I did. Do we need a three hundred fifty million bond when we only need two hundred forty. Where Where are the studies from these gentlemen? You know, put them on the, the website. Uh, you know, I, HGAC also did a uh, major thoroughfare plan study with the county and the commissioners. They worked on that together. Um, and I would, again, I, I would strongly talk to each one of those commissioners and find out because each one of them has their, you know, his, their own, his own way of going about their study. I, I chose to do it this way because it was a great way for me to engage the community, bring everybody in. First time we've had a new commissioner in 25 years in Precinct 3. Um, when they leave, they take a lot of institutional knowledge with them. So it was a good way for us to sit down and gather all this. And I think, Jim, you've kind of toyed with the idea of doing the very same thing. He just has only been here two months. And I only had two months to, to do what it took you two years, two years to, to so. try to do it. Yes, John? Yes, if this does not pass, then that, does it mean that we will get lower property taxes? No. Do we have a reason for Yeah. Me? Oh, Commissioner <laughs> Nowak! <laughs> You were at the township board meeting today. And I didn't say you a didn't word. say a word. Although you were, I was trying to get you because it came up. You know, they said, "Does each commissioner do, can he spend the money any way he wants?" And of course, I was. You know, they can't because one commissioner I'm going to fool with another commissioner's money budget. But I want to ask you, what what was your take out of that meeting, and what is your take on the way? Bruce Tuck handled the situation and, and absorbed all those blows that were coming against him. By the way, full disclosure, I really think he'd make a great district judge myself. <laughs> well, um, first of all, we all need to be able to sit, stand up, sit down, be in the same room together, and not hurl insults to one another. So, Charlie, I would like to say that I'm sorry that somebody took a silly comment and threw it out at you. I think that was the wrong Tony. way to go around. Well, it was the wrong it way to go around. It wasn't me, something. Charlie. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, it yeah, and, and I, again, I, I'm not here to make up for, for him. I, I was sitting there. It was should have never been said. But, uh, you know, I think the township is trying to look at this as analytically as possible, and their, their board is divided on it. And, you know, when you've got a, 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 a very emotional topic, you know, people people get kind of heated. I think that I think Bruce is, is used to that, and I'm certainly not going to speak on his behalf. But uh, again, I don't think there's a commissioner up there, and I mean this. I, I do not think that the commissioner is going to pull a bait and switch on you, and if they do, vote them out of office. I mean, and they're all right here. So if they tell you they're going to do a project and they don't, you have the ultimate power, or vice versa. So. This is a comment. I don't know why we're extending the parkway, the Woodlands Parkway. There's the Weems group that has 300 acres sitting over there where we want to, where not us, but these guys want to extend the parkway. Why are we doing it? Are we doing it strictly for the Weems group so they can build their big fancy homes over there? Well, I don't think a lot of people know all that that well, goes on behind the scenes. First, First of all, I don't know Williams at all, or the Williams group, or anything to do with them. Last week, Tuesday, Wednesday, at some point, somebody had brought me some information on the Williams group <coughs> and on West, I can't think of the name of the other development, but uh, the 2,300 acres that's being developed. I called the county engineer and asked them what they had on it, and they sent me a platted piece uh, on the west side of 249, correct, what's the name of that subdivision? West, uh, yeah, right. West Wood Trace. Wood Trace. Wood Trace. And I confirmed with HGAC that anything that is platted is in a mobility study. So the portions of it that were platted, they knew about. 
I didn't know about Wien's group or this other group, but I'm also not the commissioner of Precinct 2. I know what's going on in Precinct 3. Craig and Charlie know those those entities, and they knew they were there. Is there, once any of these road contracts do come up, do you set guidelines in place that, all right, if you finish this ahead of schedule, there's, there, there's I don't know, bonus in for doing that. Um, instead of having a job milked out for two years that could be done in 18 months. Well, I mean, it's all depend on how it's let, who's in charge of the project. Are you referring to something specific? No, no, no. It, it, any of these major road, road works. I, I, what was going on on 105, I saw take a long time. Uh, and <coughs> is, there, is there any incentive for the, the contractor that you make any particular contracts to, to to meet this ahead of schedule that in turn will save you money, but then they can get a bonus instead of just letting it drag on for periods of time. They most I know a lot of contracts are written where the contractors actually get penalized if they go behind schedule. And a lot yes. of times they're they're being penalized when they get behind. Um, this is the first time I'm gonna go through a big project letting process when this bond passes or if this bond passes. So it's some questions that I already have written down is can we do like a completion bonus? You know, is, is that something that the county is able to do to try to encourage them to get in and get out as quickly as possible? Um, but I definitely understand where you're coming from. James? Yes, sir. I do apologize. I, I have a set of Thursdays and I'm going to be late for so. Any, any precinct four questions? Please feel free to call. Yes. Do you know off the top of your head what the current bond debt is? Oh, I had it. Um, it's five hundred something million. I, I don't have it. I, I I know the number. I just don't have it with me. Approximately five hundred million. Bonded debt. Yes, ma'am. Laura Palmer, and I've seen that in the middle of months. Very good. And my question is. You said we should Thank seek you. Commissioner Precinct 2 mm -hmm. if we were interested in having that part of the bond removed. What's his incentive to listen to us if we're not his constituents? What does he have to lose when this bond issue does not go, you know, when it doesn't pass because we don't want one of these part to be part of it? Well, we all, none of us can do any of the projects on our list if the bond fails. And Commissioner Ryan, yeah, but he's the one you said we have to he, do. Well, it's his, he's the one who has that bond in there, I mean, that on the bond, that mm -hmm. project. And also, Commissioner Riley represents a large portion of the world. It's Alden Bridge, uh, College Park, Winter Hills. That's all. Yeah, um, you're our commissioner. I'm here for yeah, I so understand. If we're not his constituents, what's his incentive to listen to us? I think it's just the uh, entire bond failing? Yeah, the, the bond failing. If, you know, while Charlie's here, one of the things I think Charlie and I should do is have a big town hall meeting in the Woodlands and start addressing some of these concerns. He's you know? my commissioner. Charlie, you need to take it out. <laughs> I agree. Thank you. you need to Thank take you. it out, Charlie. He's He's right to, and the and this road right. goes right behind my subdivision. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, oh, James, uh, thanks for being here. No, nope, I'm glad. I am I'm a resident of the Woodlands. I am a resident of Precinct 2. I live in Alden Bridge. Mm -hmm. I work in the energy corridor of Houston. I drive 2978 every day. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, oh, an extension of Woodlands Parkway or Carden Store Road would benefit my commute in the morning. Which I currently leave at 5:30 in the morning because of the traffic. I don't want to see the Woodlands Parkway extension, and I will work to oppose and torpedo the entire bond if that's what it takes to stop. It. Yeah. You know, I, I mentioned it to a few. I'm, a, I'm a, just an old East Texas boy. I grew up in dirty East Texas politics. You know, what's the stop? And I'm going to drop the dreaded I word for the Woodlands, forgive me, the corporation word, from coming in later and saying, okay, you forced this down our throat. We're going to annex your roadbed and set a speed limit that makes it useless for commuting and enforce it with the new police department. I mean, I don't want to see it go through. I know we need the bond. There are multiple projects in that bond that need to happen. And we need it for the county, but I will work to see it to see it stopped if that extension is included. You know, I, I, 
like I said, I understand. I mean, I'm, I'm stuck. I live in the woodlands. I can't go anywhere. Charlie probably has people begging him to build it. Everywhere I go, people are yelling at me, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Or bringing my wife into the middle of it. She hates it, doesn't, you know. <laughs> It, uh, I mean, I, I, I told Craig today, I can't go to a baseball field. I can't go to it without people. And I understand. Personally, I, I, I don't want to roll either. But there's also... I, I'm what's, one, the, what's a commissioner gain for it? I mean, if the people don't want it, what, why push it? Well, I think it's their people do want it, I, I, I'm assuming. No, you're not going to be able to vote. Vote for it, you vote for it, you come through. If you don't vote, you're not getting your stuff. You, you're going to have to just not even vote. Huh? I, just, I know it's not a good thing, but I wonder if Commissioner Riley could tell us when the Woodlands Park, excuse me, Research Forest uh, going west is going to be four lanes both ways. If the bond passes, it'll be. Is there a bond? Is there a bond? Uh, is there a bond? The, the original I, I, bond or not? So the money's not there? It's in the bond issue. Yeah, it's in the bonds. Okay, but it got started with out being. How did it get started? I mean, what got started? I'm sorry. What got started? The research. Uh, it, it's they they got half of one direction. You know, uh, well one direction has got good, say going west, and then coming back you're switching back and forth on the research forest. From from Egypt Road. It's dangerous. I don't know how much to say here. I really I don't know whether Bob is truthful or not. I, or, or knows for sure that's what we're supposed you, to do. Not truthful, Bob. But I didn't mean that. <laughs> I, I just don't know right who right the word is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can get involved in a debate here. I don't think we can get involved in a debate. I really don't. Westwood Improvement District did that project. I'm sorry. Westwood Improvement District did that project. Yeah. I can't. I'm sorry. The Westwood Improvement District did that project. The Improvement District. Oh yeah. Don't get me on that one. Okay. Well, I mean, half of it. One way, half of it. Done about, I guess, and I haven't seen any work done since last year. Sometimes I drive down to Cape pretty often, you know. I'll be glad to talk to you about it okay. later. I just, I don't How come Westwood it. Development's not doing the other half if it's needed? Because mm -hmm. I used to live back in that area and I drove that quite a bit. I'd, I'd be glad to talk to you later about okay. that. I just, I just... The, uh, so, <laughs> any other? Yes, both of you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, I don't consider that redneck offensive. I consider it could be a lot worse. I don't like my commissioner one bit. I don't like the road road bit. I don't like the overpass at first I was seeing 74, 1488. And I would if that road does pass, gets built, I'd like to know exactly how many of those people that I thought that the county had to buy the land from actually supported Dole and Riley's campaign. And also the construction company that gets picked to do it. You know, I know they have to go through formal RFPs and all that stuff, but you look closely at it to see, you know, if it's just more and more of the good old boy network that's a that we have a problem here in Montgomery County and across the state of Texas for that matter. Amen. I mean the good old boy network is I mean needs to be voided out. I, I understand your concern, but again, I don't think it's appropriate to start it off with any sort of bad comments. It just kind of makes people stop listening. All right. Okay, I'm a big picture guy and all the stuff that I've read so far, and I haven't read all of it for sure. But uh, everything seems to be focused upon this bond and, and the mobility projects and so forth. It would help me, it would help it go down a whole lot easier for me if you said, Here's how much state money has come in to Montgomery County for mobility over the past 10 years. Here's how much federal money has come in. Get it in, in context so we're not looking at just one thing, but we're looking at the big picture. Do we, is that data available readily anywhere? Um, I'm sure that we can get from HCAC um, where, how Montgomery County has fared in state and federal dollars. I will tell you that I think we can do better at trying to get those dollars, and that's why these plans that we're putting in place make make a whole lot of sense. Because now, with the South County Mobility Plan, those projects will be included in the TIP. The the major thoroughfare plan that we did will help promote projects through the HCAC process, and um, we all need to do a better job of trying to fight to bring those dollars home. Because other in other counties, I mean, you know, they have. Fort Bend County, Harris County, 
they've done a superb job of getting those dollars, and uh, it's just one of those things we have to continue to be there, we have to be active, and we have to bring those dollars home when we can. James, got to follow on to that question right there, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I asked you earlier before the meeting what local participation cost is, and that is cost that the county has to bear it's, it's, for a project, right? Yeah, they're fortunate to bring in TxDOT or somebody to move a project up on the list. Okay, and, back to what Dell said. <laughs> have all these projects been, that are statewide, the Texas roads, have they been guaranteed by the state, funded by the state, and now we're voting on the local participation cost? I, I don't know about each project from each commissioner. I will tell you that the majority of them, yes. I mean, I know I went. I know I think every commissioner went down to TxDOT, sat down with them, visited with them, because you have to encourage. They have to sign off before you can apply, put a project through the process. You have to get a letter of support from TxDOT. If you don't have that letter of support, you're not going to receive any funding. So I'm imagining that every project on there has a letter of support. The ones that I was going to submit to the TIP. They, they, the big SPUI and I-45 has a full letter of support for TxDOT. Um, and it's a very, very competitive process. I mean, one of the things, some of the anger that we have in this room, I really want to see continue, uh, but I want us going against the people in the state. I mean, every, every time they meet in Austin, they come up with these great ideas of how they can, uh, you know, further push things down on the county and, and, find, and make us try to find a way to pay for it. One of the things that's coming down now, and I'm all for property tax relief. I paid 15 plus thousand dollars on one home. I pay way too much in property tax. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that the answer is not by telling the county. So we have the state sitting above us and they're saying, you're just gonna, you know, you're gonna have to cut your property tax rate. And how to do that? Oh, we're just gonna increase the size of the uh, exemptions. You know, homestead exemption is gonna go up. Well, I'd like to tell the state, why don't you lower your sales tax by? you know, 2%, that helped me out tremendously. Um, so it's a little bit of a uh, little bit of a rub there from the county perspective when it's, it's really going to put us in a bind as far as how do we do the things that we <coughs> have to do, how do we provide the services we have to provide, how do we provide the courts that they mandate on us, the medical examiner's office that they're going to be mandating on us soon, all of the things that they push down us and then they, you know, it's just a little bit unfair. So. Road funding is where I was getting with that. You know, TxDOT should be funding 100% of their roads. It's, I think it's absurd that we have to put any money into 105 or 45 or, you know, uh, uh, any of our state roadways. But the problem is they don't have the money to do it. And so by putting these matching dollars together, we can try to bring, their, bring a little bit of that money here to get these projects done. Um, those are things that the state legislature needs to work on. They need better funding. And that's how you can, you know, then we don't have to worry about some of these bond uh, offerings like we do right now. Uh, yes, Does the Woodlands Road Fund contribute some money to this? I don't think the Woodlands Road is going to be able to call an election. Um, they, they don't, uh, I don't think they have a voter that is, uh, I just don't think they're going to be able to call an election. Yes. The uh, $350 million, you know, in 2005, the 242 flyovers were part of the 2005 bond, and they're well behind schedule. Uh, how long? How far out is the 350 million going to carry these projects? Well, how many years is it going to be out there? According to our auditor, generally when you issue a bond, you should spend those proceeds within three years. So, I will tell you that if the bond passes for precinct three, the majority of those monies should be able to be spent in Precinct 3 rather quickly because they're all local projects that we can undertake. When you're working with the state though, I mean, you're kind of at, you, you kind of get bumped based on what they feel is a priority and they may tell you, because I'm working with them on Woodlands Parkway and they, you know, sometimes I get uh, the, the response and priority from them I want and other times I don't. And they, they, they've got a lot on their plate. Um, but. Well, I'm, I'm just saying it makes good sense to finish a bond that's well over 10 years old before you crank up and have some more money. I understand. Yes. 
has it been talked about to wait until the Grand Parkway is finished to see if that alleviates traffic at all? Good well, the, the Grand Parkway, uh, in, this, <laughs> in, the studies, in the studies that I did and with HGAC, I mean, they factor in through modeling what the impact of the Grand Parkway is going to be. Now, obviously, there's not a model that's 100% accurate out there. We, we know that. We, you know, I, I've sat at home many times waiting for a hurricane to come that never gets here. <laughs> but um, they are anticipating, you know, the, the effects of that. Because it's something I asked a lot of times because I've got Grand Parkway coming right through Precinct 3, and it's really important to me to try to make sure we get it right. I can tell you that Brayford Road needs to be expanded wider than we're going to be able to expand it with or without Grand Parkway coming through there. I mean, it's only going to alleviate so much of that traffic and we're only going to continue to grow. Um, I'm, I'm worried the Grand Parkway may be underbuilt the day it opens. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll see. How does, how does uh, Cactus Jack Cagle, the commissioner from Houston, play into all this from Harris County? Nothing. He, he manages the, Harris County, and we well, manage. He you know, is the, uh, we I work know. together on some projects like Kirkendall and Donovan. Yeah. Um, you know, we have two big ones. I mean, those are those are two major projects that are really better linking our counties together, and so he's been very easy to work with uh, so far. Has is, is, uh, Judge Doyle been easy to work with? Judge Doyle's a peach. <laughs> <laughs> Peach, that was a softball. <laughs> I have read the mobility plan as much as I've seen of it and stuff like that, but I am concerned, and I hope you can alleviate my fears that we won't be bringing Metro up here. I, right now, the county has nothing to do with mass transit that's run by uh, the township and Conroe. I don't see anybody want to bring Metro anywhere near Montgomery County. I would fight like hell to stop that from happening. That, that on the record. You can cross your heart and I've only one vote, but I'll fight like hell against okay. Metro. I think we all would. That, that, that's the it's just a comment and just why we're so distrustful. I'm going to get my hair cut. I know. <laughs> the government, the Westward Improvement District, that is. They, that road that they ask about, that district, they passed, they, they put it on a ballot or whatever, and it got voted down. So they went in and they redrew the lines where the voting people went. They took you out of it? They took a whole, sub, <laughs> they took a whole subdivision out of it, the whole Westwood subdivision out of it, left an apartment complex, and just the people who were on the board, the directors' houses in the sub, they could vote. So, I mean, it's just corruption. And, and I will tell you because I've been, I've been somewhat criticized for not adamantly opposing the rut. And the way I see it is that again is a state issue. If if our state legislatures allow for that type of stuff to happen, how can we condemn these people for doing it? Right, wrong, or indifferent? We need to go after the state and have them clean up some of these laws. I don't like special purpose districts at all because I think. To myself, those tax dollars could be coming right here to the county and we could be doing things with them. But they're out there and a lot of them are responsible and do the right thing. And then there's some that maybe aren't as transparent and responsible as others. Uh, you know Ken Bond, uh, who's chairman of the first panel, I think he shared tonight, but we came in and met with him mm -hmm. a couple the months. What's that? He has the flu. He has the flu. Oh, he has the flu. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we talked about, or he did, about the next loop around this area outside of Grand Park, about two miles further out. I'm not averse to spending money. I just want it to spend wisely and not just some brother-in-law project and precinct, you know, whatever. Um, has there been any thought to the next loop going out on the north side, say between here and Conroe or further? I have no idea of another of another massive yeah. loop. I mean, this Grand Parkway took how many years to? Uh, to <laughs> I mean, it's been up there forever. Well, there's so many people moving into the county. There's and, no need to be and, east and, west and, Well, and that's and that's one of the comments about urban sprawl, trying to curtail some of that. Curiosity: the the projects that you're asking for right now, 
how long is that supposed to cover us for? How much long, do, you know, are we really planning far enough out? Well, are we just five more and more? Five or are we just <laughs> trying to, do, you know, are we reacting rather than? Hopefully, well, I would tell you, it, first of all, yeah, part of it is reacting because we're so far behind. Yep. And then part of it is my plan. I have a zero, five. My plan goes all the way out to 25 years from now. So I think we're taking a very long-term approach. But I will tell you, this $350 million is just a start. I mean, I know that y'all don't want to hear it. Um, and I know we have to issue debt as responsibly as possible. I hate, I hate debt. I hate having to issue more of it. But until we have a better way of funding our roads, until the state steps up and takes care of their responsibilities with their roadway, in fact, last year the state sent us, a, the commissioners and the former county judge, sent us a letter telling us they were just going to give us some of these state roads. And we're like, are you crazy? They thought that was a solution. We'll just give them to you. They're poorly maintained. They, you know, it's like that would have been the worst thing for us to do. So, you know, the state gets to stand up there and talk about how what a great position they're in, and we have hardly any debt, and we have all this rainy day fund. Well, when you make the counties do all your heavy lifting, I guess you do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this isn't good for Rick Perry because the Texas Miracle is really the Texas boondoggle at the county level. Yeah, they push and it And that's going to come out. I mean, that is going to come out. I come from Illinois, and everybody, and I keep telling my sister who lives right off of Michigan Avenue, I said, we have done it right in Texas. I'm so happy we're, you know, that, that, that there's, well, I'm finding out that's not the case. I mean, nowhere, nowhere would you have a planned community like the Woodlands and have this, all this traffic coming right through it, you know, by design. There's no way. Well, they're leaving now. They can't stand it any longer. Yes. Well, you know, that's an interesting question because what we're really discussing is state control or local control, local county control. Who's going to pay for it? So that's a good question. And I'm, I'm, I'm the one leaning toward the local. You know, I don't want to pay for El Paso. I, I think we have time for two more questions, James and Mark. You know that I think you're the best commissioner we got going? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to work as hard as I can, and I have 17,000 people vote for me through the primary, and I'll do everything I can to have them come out to vote against this. I'm asking, I'm asking the same thing. I think you know, there's one project jeopardizes a whole bond, and the best best way to ensure passage would be to remove that project. Yeah. Now, FM 1960 was I lived on it, so that was a definitely an effective fear attack for me. I would move if that's what it turned into. Yeah. Well, my question is this, because now I have friends at Exxon Mobil. I've already, it's hard to find houses. I have help one find one up at Jacob Reserve. I live over in Chateau Woods, up in Precinct 4. And I have friends down in Imperial Oaks, and they're actually right by the Grand Parkway. Okay. That looks like that might be a good thing. It's cutting off their exit from their subdivision, though. Great trail. But my question is this. The fact that the, the Woodlands Parkway extension would up, open up new development, even if they're expensive homes, that's not a bad thing for people I'm talking to next time over. We're talking about a lot of people moving down here. My question is this, other than that, assuming that would be a benefit, what are the other benefits? I've only heard negatives and one little thing about the, the benefit of it, that it was, a, it was a essential step in mobility. What does it really do to help mobility, or what's the good thing about it? I haven't really heard anything about that. Uh, you know, I will tell you from, from my standpoint, I, my concern is the number of cars coming into the woodlands and getting out of the woodlands at a.m. peak time and p.m. peak time because we're challenged already in, in moving traffic flow through the woodlands. If you look at the engineering studies, certainly we can have some additional capacity. But in my mind, it doesn't really matter how many more cars we can hold on that road. If people are opposed to the road, they're opposed to the road. Right. You know, so the um, and, and I and I respect that and understand that. 
Um, I think there's going to be some benefit for the people that leave out west in the morning if they want. If you live in Sterling Ridge, because it's no good way to go, go west. Exactly, but if you live near uh, Kirkendall or Gosling, yeah. you're going to take Kirkendall or Gosling to Grand Parkway and go on about your business. So, so the question is, and our friends left, but. If the road is going to be underutilized, then why spend $22 million on it? So that's, that's what I don't understand. Yes, we can't, we can't hear you. Is there something to substitute for that project? Like, in other words, oh, like oh, if, if what we, but if what we do now is um, the next step would be, like, we've been here since, since the other guy was left. <coughs> We need to make an appointment for the There's plenty of other projects. Okay, so if we sub something else out that's more valuable, and we know what we were talking about, and ask for something else, there's lots of us there. 242 enhancements. I mean, right away. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of other uh, projects that are available. I've asked you know, and I've asked Charlie and Craig. I told Craig again today, probably two or three times. Just remove this, and I and I asked them, and they, the door was just a little more open. <laughs> that if I were the one that had a controversial project on this bond that was jeopardizing a countywide bond election, what kind of hell would I be facing? Who owns oh. Who owns the land down that road? Because it's been in the process. The Waynes Group, huh? I don't know. The well, well, you know, they've been working on right of way acquisition for years, so they've had plenty of opportunity to come and talk to people well before they started to see if people had interest in it. Now the taxpayers have paid paid money on right away acquisition, yeah. and they're stuck with this land. Yeah. Well, you know, you just don't. Let the car they can sell it. They can sell it. But I want to thank y'all for allowing me to come. I'd be Residential happy to come developers. anytime and visit and talk with your group. Um, I would encourage you to, to try to meet with your other county officials and to pay for our proposed if they won't pull it off to at least at least agree to some sort of moratorium on it so we can all sit down and have meetings. I'm more than happy to have joint meetings with uh, Charlie, Riley, and Precinct 2. Um, you know, we, we need to find a way in which we can all work together to, to continue to improve and enhance mobility in our county or we will all suffer long term. And believe me, I understand where you are on this project. So we thank don't have to make a decision by, to, to take it off. Anytime before they start talking, Four days of ballot. Yeah, so they can take it up a week before the ballot. I mean, that's well, no, it's not in writing on the ballot. This is what I'm trying to tell you. The ballot is going to be to pass the road yeah, for, for for the three hundred and fifty million dollars. So it's not specified. Yeah. 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 No, it's not too big a fail. And I'll, the, the comment was made earlier. If we don't pass this, is it is it going to kill us? No, because we can come back in November. We have plenty of time. There is no reason this should have been forced down our throats to pass this ballot when there's been less than two months. The committee that worked on putting this together had three meetings in three months. That's it. There's uh, James did a great job. Um, spending two years trying to put the engineering and stuff together, and we've got a commissioner out there that won't speak to us as a group. No, he just told us out there. He won't come to talk to us, but if you want to come to talk to him in his office, he'll talk to Charlie. Cecil said he'll come. I Cecil. Told you call Cecil did. Yeah. Charlie. I told him when it's going to call. Now he's not the commissioner, but the thing is, 